God bless. We're going to ask that you would stand and receive the family. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live again. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Man that is born of a woman has but a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. We carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength when this of my life. life. Is over, of whom I'll shall I be afraid? Away. When the wicked to a home, even my home, enemies God and celestial my foes shore, came upon me to eat up my flesh, fly away. I stumble in fear. We're singing, though of hosts fly away, oh glory, I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, we're singing, I fly away. Oh, so glad morning when this life is over. I'll fly away. Oh, yes, to a home of God's celestial shore. Weary days 
understand another thing. I understand what the scripture said. Precious in the sight of God is the death of the saints. See, death simply means separation. So we are not, he's not annihilated. We are only separated from him right now. We're going to see Tony Campbell another time. We're going to see him again. And so this is a, a separation, but one day, hallelujah, we all gonna meet the same thing. We're gonna have to leave here one day. I hope we don't have to die. I hope in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, thank you, the dead in Christ, going to rise first, but then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Any, any folks ready to be caught up? Because this is what this is all about. We're getting ourselves ready to be caught up. I know this is a celebration for Tony Campbell, but this is also an opportunity for us to get ourselves ready to be caught up and I found out one thing how to get ourselves ready is to bring God into our situation how do I bring God into my situation I open up my mouth and I give my God praise because as I praise him 
it attracts him. He inhabits my praise. Can I get somebody that's ready to meet him, to put your hands together and give God, I'm ready to meet you, praise. Come on and open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you, thank you right now. I give you the glory, I give you the honor, I give you the praise. You're my keeper, you're my sustainer, you're my way maker, you're my everything. I give you the praise, I give you the glory. We want to celebrate the life. Thank you, uh, Minister Tony Campbell, Pastor Tony Campbell, and we want to send him off with joy. Thank you. So at this time, we're going to ask if you can to stand, all but the family, to stand as Pastor Richard Williams come with our invocation, followed by the Old Testament scripture by Elder William Ishmael. Then we'll have the New Testament scripture by Elder Lee Jones Jr. Following them, there will be a selection from the Campbell family. Amen. Come on. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, it's once again in the precious name of Jesus the Christ that we, your people, have come. We've come because we have nowhere else to turn. And we need to hear from you, Lord, today. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would come into this sanctuary, God, that you would have your way here today. God, that you would help this family, oh God, and help those of us who've come to celebrate this life, oh God. That you would prop us up on every weak and leaning side. And Lord, oh God, Lord, let the word fall today, oh God. One that will keep us up out of our, out of our rut in the name of Jesus. God, you said in your word, Isaiah declared that it was when King Uzziah died that he saw the Lord high and lifted up. So right now, God, we want you to, to permeate this room, oh God with your presence, oh God, that somebody might see you in the midst of our tears, that they might see you, that they might feel you in the midst of sorrow, that they might know, God, that you still hold the world in the palm of your hand, God. God, we need you now. Sister Gert needs you right now. Mother Campbell needs you right now. His children need you right now. Our community needs you right now. Show up, Lord, in this place. Have your way, and we'll be careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise. And all of God's children said together, amen. Old Testament reading, Psalm 139. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassed about, thou compassed my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but O oh, Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me 
in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I made, when I made in secret and, cur and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in the book of my members were written, which is continuance, where fashion, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O God, how great is the sum of them. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The word is blessed. The Old Testament scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians 15. I'm sorry, the New Testament scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 22. And it reads, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. May God add a blessing to the readers and doers of his word. We're asking that if any uh, men of Mason Temple are seated, if we ask that you would give up your seat and let someone else take your seat, we are greatly, ladies, ladies, if any ladies need a seat, men, give up your seat. And uh, let them have that seat, if you will, please. God bless you. Amen. According to the program, the Campbell family is coming. Come on, come on, come on, come on, set the atmosphere, come on, come on, come on, come on. say thank you Lord I want to say thank you
forward. They're asking uh, that the remarks be limited to two minutes because we could talk about Tony a lot, amen, but they're asking in the sense of time that you would limit your remarks to two minutes. Amen? Amen. Let's hear from Reverend William Jones, followed by Superintendent James Lee, and then Elder Gilchrist. Let the church say amen. It is an extreme honor and a blessing to be able to speak over my brother-in-law, whom down through the years I've learned to love deeply. One of Pastor Cameron's favorite saying was, I love everybody. It ain't a thing in the world you can do about it. Amen. He also had a saying where he said, I don't know how to say no. When somebody comes to me or calls me for help, I have no other choice but to help. And time and time again, Tony has proven that to all of us. There's never been a time that I've called him and he never came to my rescue. And believe me, there's been many calls that you'll never know about that he and I both will take to our graves. But I want to say this, and I'm going to be obedient to the time, but Tony had some great qualities. But his best quality was not his excellent singing voice. His, his, best, his greatest quality was not in his ability to preach. But his greatest quality was he was anointed to lead. I'll tell you this short story and I'm going to sit down. Uh, years ago, we were at a ball game at Green Sea Floyd's. And, and I'm sure some of the people are here that remember this. Uh, a street gang was getting ready to attack a, a young boy. And they were waiting outside and people were running and, and going their different ways. And they surrounded this young boy. And even before Tony got saved, he came to this boy's rescue. A, a, a crowd of street gang facing here against this one boy. And Tony came and stood in front of him. And he said, you're not going to bother him because this is somebody's child. And I refuse to stand here and let him go down by himself. And because I said he was anointed to lead, half the people in that gym came and stood behind Tony, myself included. And they said, if you're going to get him, you're going to have to get us first. It was his anointing to lead. And to the day he passed and gone on to glory, he was still leading. Even on this day, look around, he's still leading. So I stay, say to this family, as the songwriter said, may the works that I've done, may the works that I've done, not what I say about myself, but may the works that I've done speak for me. Sleep on my brother. Payday has come for you. And as the songwriter said, save a seat for me. God bless. This is a uh happy time and a sad time. It's a sad time for loved ones because separation is a terrible thing. It was so terrible that it cost a perfect sinless man his life the man that we call Jesus. I met Brother Tony through his wife. She would, she would come to me because she would attend church here. 
And, and she would say, my, my husband is really busy. He loves people. He does this. He does that. And I just wish you would just be in prayer for him. And I'm going to try to get him to come to this church and hear you. And he did. And eventually he became a part of the ministry here. I love that good gospel singer. And uh, I had had choirs in the church and they'd done a wonderful job, but I hadn't had me a good gospel singer. My son was a musician at one point, the, the present pastor, Pastor Lee. He was a musician at one point. And he wasn't that keen, he don't like me to say it, but he wasn't that keen on gospel music, quartet music. And so I told Brother Campbell, and Brother Campbell came here and started singing on Sunday. And after a while, I looked over and Pastor Lee was stomping his foot. <laughs> I, I told Pastor Campbell, I said, Pastor Campbell, if you keep singing, I think we're gonna finally get him in. He said, I got him, Pastor, I got it. But, but I, I, I am so blessed to have met him. He was a wonderful man, a wonderful supporter. And even uh, when he felt the leading of the Lord to, to start the ministry, he came to me because he wanted to make sure that everything was done decently and in order. And uh, we talked and we discussed different things. Amen. But, you know, a lot of times when preachers come up in churches and they leave, it's a division. But he would call me, he called me more than any of the other preachers that I know. And he said, you are my pastor. I'm calling my pastor. Amen. So I'm blessed because of the short time that we had together. I'm blessed because of it. I'm blessed because I, I tell this and I'm finished. I one day I went to his home. Uh, we were in, in the area and I went by his house. I wanted to greet him and, and talk with him and just say hello. Amen. And when I got there, I said, Pastor Campbell, I'm going to tell you something. If I ever thought any other way, I don't think it now. As far as you live from my church, you gotta love me. <laughs> so he just fell out laughing. He, I told you, Pastor, I love you, man, I love you. I think it, it's not necessary to say a lot about the impact he had on lives of people. Just look around. That's all you gotta do, look around, and you can see the impact that he had. God bless the family. We're praying for your strength, Sister Gertha. They were a blessed couple. Amen. They were a blessed couple. Amen. They, they, they really were a blessed couple. And we're praying for her that God will continue to bless and strengthen her and the family in their time of bereavement. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's try that. Praise the Lord, everybody. So the protocol has already been established to the pastor, to all of you, my father's children, to my extended family. Don't y'all know I love y'all so much. I got two things I want to say, and I'm getting out of here. One thing we know about our brother, my right-hand man, he sung with us 
for so many years. And one of the things you must know about Pastor Campbell is one, he's a jokester. That's the first thing. There was never a dull moment where we had traveled or had practice and we didn't go nowhere and he wouldn't cut up. Even when he was serious, he is still cut up. I never will forget it one time we were singing. We was, Bishop, we were singing in Dillon and we was at our anniversary and he began to sing. He was singing and you know anything about Tony. Tony loved to sing. And just to make it a little more personal, Tony loved to drive. When you start, any of my quartet lovers in here, you know what a drive means. So every time, he loved to drive. And, and I remember one time he was singing, and next thing you know, he said, see that lady over there? She got the Holy Ghost. And we looked around, and we ain't see no lady nowhere. I said, I said, color boy, I said, what you, that's always what I used to call him. I said, color boy, where, where you see that lady at? He said, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just got caught up in it. I said, boy. You. But another thing, he, another thing I want to tell you is that not only was he a jokester, but when he got serious, when every time when he opened up his mouth, he always gave God the glory. He didn't give 25, he didn't give 50, he didn't give 75, but he gave it all the way. And I remember one time that he was tired and he was not feeling well and we had to sing and we said, Tony, can you pull it this time? He said, yeah, I can. And, and I remember, and I remember looking at him and he was already tired. He was already going through so much. He was just starting the church up and yet in the midst of all of that, still dealing with the human side of it, he began to sing and he began to do all that he could because every time when he got on stage, you saw a smile on his face. When you saw a smile on his face, it didn't matter how much hurt he was going through. It didn't matter how much pain he was going through. He still ended up singing. And I remember when he would sing, he would say, well, I've been waiting all day long. I've been waiting all day long to sing. And then he'll quote his favorite scripture. It said that, but they that wait upon the Lord. Come on, Bible readers. Shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as he. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But then he'll turn around and he'll look at us and say, Every time I turn around, the Lord keep blessing me. Every time I turn around, the Lord. Keep blessing me. Come on, my son. Every time I'm. He keeps on blessing me. So can y'all help me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother, you are right. Hallelujah. Praise him right there. Every time I turn around, the Lord, he keep blessing me. Keep blessing me. I'm honored for you to be able to stand before you. I done came through death several times. Pastor Tony County, just a few months, about a month ago, he stood at my bedside. I was in and out of death. And he looked down on me. I didn't even know who it was. He stood at my bedside. He said, Bishop, you can't go. Can't leave here. You got more work to do. You got to come on now. And after he prayed, and my uncle prayed, then all my memory come back. <laughs> he, 
He said, do you, do you want some water? I said, yeah. And my wife said, well, you look at that. I've been trying to get him to drink water all day. He gave me my first drink of water coming back from death. We had a strong bond. I didn't even know I was going to even be able to make it here. I didn't know. But when I stand here, I just had open heart surgery. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing out there. Oh, I did dialysis yesterday. And Lord, when I looked in the mirror, I said, boy, you look all right. <laughs> but we did a lot together. And, and, and my wife, I know she's probably looking as, don't you get up there and overexert yourself. And I'm not, I'm looking at you, Miss Gert. <laughs> You done got your head done dry. Lord, don't let him do that. And I'm not going to do it. But I just want to tell you how good the Lord has been. This man prayed for me. We had a relationship. But I want to tell you something. There's a couple of things I want to say about him. When I found out that we were related, we went years just saying, hey, cuz but never got a chance to know one another. It was when I took sick and I ran into him, he was blind then. And I say, man, I'm coming to see you. He said, well, you come on. I'll be to the house. Got out there several times. Got under the tree with him. And we got to talking about faith. I said, camera. I said, God can heal your eyes. I said, he'll open them. I said, if you believe, he'll open them. We were just sitting there, feeling around all of a sudden. He said, I'm getting ready to drive my truck. I said, you going to do what? <laughs> I, I'm getting ready to drive my truck. I, I, come on, we're going to leave on shop. That's his other brother. I, I was a little scared. I said, well, let's go then. I was the first rider <laughs> after the Lord gave his sight back. <laughs> and when we got to his brother's shop, he come out running and fussing and said, boy, what in the world are you doing? He said, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm driving my truck. He said, boy, are you crazy. And he looked at me and said, Bishop, you crazy too for right. <laughs> Another thing I want to bring out about my brother, when we was in the pandemic and the churches wasn't coming together, it bothered him. He said, man, we got to get the word out still. So he, he had this name of this broadcast called Hear Ye the Word broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing I told him, Dr. Lee, I said, well, you told Dr. Lee about it? He said, yeah, I'm going to go. I said, you're going to have to tell him what you're doing. You can't do it like that. And, and so he, and then he got with Dr. Lee. I said, you tell Dr. Lee that I'm Bishop Edwards and I'll be on the line to make sure you're doing right. <laughs> and so that line went on and miracles took place on that line. And then out of that, then New House of Praise was birthed out of all of that. Yes. I walked every step of the way with him. I said, look, you ain't got to call me your bishop. I said, I'm going to be your bishop anyway. Cause I'm going to make sure you're right. I said, if I'm a bishop over all these other folk and can't cover my, fu my family, then I ain't no good. And so it went on. He did all of that. Knew how to praise. Come on, I think we should give a hand clap of praise for the ministry. Come on, clap your hands for them. 
you all there. Keep them in your prayers. Keep them encouraged. Run with the legacy that God has birthed out of his soul. I went there the last two services. You know, they won't let me do a whole lot, so I, I snuck away and went and played the keyboard for it. Why well, say, oh, I say, well, as long as you're going down there, I, you, you'll be all right. I went down there, but I watched what he was preaching. He kept telling the congregation, I got my business fixed. If you ain't got your business fixed, you better get it fixed. That was his last words. He said, he, he, he said, he told me, he said, if you go before, if I go before you and you go before me, he said, if you talk over me, this is what I want you to say. He said, tell him about old Tony Campbell. I used to run women. I used to do all of that. I used to cut up bad. I used to gamble. I used to do all of that. But tell him, I got my business fixed. <laughs> It don't matter what you think about me. I got my business fixed. Oh. Can I ask y'all a question? Ain't God a good God? God is a good God. Amen. There is a black Acura TLX South Carolina tag 236. You're blocking a driveway and your vehicle needs to be moved. Amen. Black Acura. Amen. Blocking a driveway. Your vehicle needs to be moved. Amen. Now on the program, that Campbell family, did y'all enjoy them the first time? Well, we bringing them back one more time. Come on, let's give it, uh, put our hands together and give God some praise for the Campbell family. Come on, come on back and come, come on, that singing family. As they come, this is was one of Tony's favorite songs that he used to love to sing. And we would definitely have to do it today for him. If he was here, we would definitely We would definitely sing this song today. Ain't God a good God? Ain't God a good God? Ain't God a good God? You ought to tell him you've been so good to me. Y'all come on the clap those hands. Oh, good God. God on my Won't the Lord deliver oh, you yeah. Won't the Lord deliver you yeah. yeah Won't the Lord deliver oh, you yeah. You ought to tell him it's been So good to me Won't the Lord bring you out yeah. Won't the Lord bring you out Yeah, yeah. 
Come on, lift your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. I mean, Miss, Miss Vicki Hickman, come on, she's going to have our acknowledgments. And after that, I'll be back to introduce, amen, the sermon for the day. God, 
body where the protocol has already been established. <clears throat> Acknowledgement. Words are inadequate to express the humbleness and gratefulness we feel towards all of our friends who have consoled us during our bereavement. Your prayers, your love, your presence and service has sustained us. Your cards of sympathy, floral, <clears throat> and all other services are warmly appreciated. We saw all of these as God's love expressed through you. Whatever you did to console our hearts, we thank you so very much. May God continue to bless you. We received a numerous amount of cards. First Lady Campbell and her family have them, and they will read them during their leisure time, but we did choose several that we will read on today with sympathy. It's hard to understand a loss like yours, but hope you know that others are thinking of you, caring about you, and wishing you comfort and peace, keeping the family in prayer. Word of Truth Church, Pastor M. McMillan. With sympathy and prayers for comfort, thinking of you and asking God to hold you close in comfort and love, Pastor Stephen Hill Sr. and the Mitchell C. Baptist Church, Green Sea, South Carolina. With sympathy to you and your family, what more beautiful gift, what brighter light could your loved one have given the world than the caring that is so clearly written in the hearts of your whole family? So sorry for your loss, Pastor Morell and Lady Petrina Riggins, Cedar Branch Missionary Baptist Church. I wish you could see the heavenly view, how God knows what you're going through, how every hour he's by your side, your faithful shepherd, friend, and guide, I wish you could see his smiling face as he pours out his love and grace, replacing fears with no faith to stand, for he is the only one who holds your hand. First Lady Campbell praying for you, sending love and sincere condolences, the Savory September Birthday Club of Mason Temple Church of God in Christ. The only reason we feel such profound loss is because we, we had such a profound blessing. How sad we are to know, but how lucky we are and how fortunate we were are still to know the stories and experiences and memories we share. Let us find peace in the past to carry our hearts for the heavenly voices. Resolution of respect for Elder Tony Campbell, our beloved pastor at New House of Praise. We are today comforted by the words of our Lord in Revelations 21 and 4, which says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Whereas, Elder Tony Campbell was a pastor of New House of Praise, passing this life on March the 15th, 2004. And whereas, it has pleased Almighty God to take into himself our pastor, Elder Tony Campbell, too soon by our measure, but in the providence of the Almighty, knowing, divine God. Whereas in God's holy wisdom, he has called home Elder Tony Campbell to dwell with him in the glories of paradise. The officers and members of New House of Praise offer their sincere condolences to our First Lady, Gertha Campbell, and family. Your sorrow is our sorrow. Your loss is magnified by the loss of a dear soul, our pastor. And whereas Elder Tony Campbell served this earthly kingdom with devout ministrations to this church as pastor for two years, and whereas our cherished Elder Tony Campbell shared the fruits of his labor as our pastor, and touch the lives of others through his teaching, preaching, singing, mentoring, and loving support throughout the last two years. And whereas Elder Tony Campbell performed his work on this earth and offered his service to the church for the greater honor and glory of God, unreservedly and the spirit of humility. And whereas Elder Tony Campbell was not only a loving and devoted husband and father, but also a spirit-filled pastor, gracious counselor, and exemplary friend always ready to provide an encouraging word and offer strong support to those in need. And whereas we have been blessed by the presence of Elder Tony Campbell in our lives and as our pastor at New House of Praise, therefore be it resolved that we embrace this bereaved family in our common bond of grief and remembrance of our beloved soul, our pastor. And therefore be it resolved that we bow in acceptance of the perfection of God's plan to gather each of us into his merciful arms when we have fulfilled our task on this earth be it further resolved that a period of official mourning shall be observed for 30 days by the presence of an empty seat at New House of Praise during service to acknowledge the passing of our esteemed pastor, Elder Tony Campbell, and that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and kept in the church archives. In the words of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, let not your heart be troubled. 
You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if you go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Be at peace in the everlasting love of the Lord. Respectfully submitted on this 23rd day of March, 2024, on behalf of the officers and members of the New House of Praise, 148 East Sellers Road, Marion, South Carolina. Green C. Floyd's High School, senior class of 1985. Greetings, Ms. Gertha Phillips, Campbell, and family. On behalf of the Green C. Floyd's High School, class of 1985, please accept our sincere condolences for the transitioning of your husband and life partner, Reverend Tony Campbell. Our prayers continue to be with you, and we send our prayers and heartfelt condolences as you and your family celebrate the wonderful life of a beloved husband, father, grandfather, family member, pastor, and friend, Reverend Tony Campbell, with deepest sympathy, senior class of 1985. The obituary. I have fought a good fall. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, 2 Timothy 4 and 7. Tony Lee Campbell, the son of Edith George and the late Laverne Campbell Sr., was born on September the 23rd, 1963, in Lower South Carolina. Tony departed this earthly life on Friday, March the 15th at McLeod Seacoast Hospital. During his youthful years, Tony attended Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church. He is a 1982 graduate of Greasy Floyd's High. Tony had many hobbies that he enjoyed doing, which include singing, bowling, riding horses, riding motorcycles with the Carolina Biker Boys, fishing, and being the master of ceremony for many events. He served as vice president of the Finkley High School Training School Alumni Association for many years. Tony enjoyed dedicated his time to the community and to the Mount Olive Senior Citizen Center. He was such a great asset to the community and was loved by so many people. One thing he enjoyed most was watching his Pittsburgh Steelers. In 1985, he, he met and married the love of his life, the former Gertha Phillips. And this union was blessed with three daughters and three sons. Tony was a devoted husband, son, father, brother, uncle, and grandfather. He was a true portrait legend who loved his talent singing with the original Campbell Singers and the Heavenly Voices. He started his very own group, the Golden Airs, where he enjoyed singing with his brothers. Tony was currently a member of Bishop Chris Edwards and Diversity. Even through singing, was his, even though singing was his passion, in 2015, while attending the Mason Temple Church of God in Christ, under the leadership of Pastor Superintendent James L. Lee, he was called into the ministry and received his license. After serving under his pastor for many years, God elevated him to become the founder of New House of Praise, and he became an ordained pastor on Sunday, March the 6th, 2022. Pastor Kelman enjoys spreading the word throughout the community and various cities. Tony is preceded in death by his father, Laverne Campbell, Sr., a daughter, Felicia Campbell, two brothers, Minister Ronnie Campbell and Vern Lee Besson. So many memories of Tony will be forever cherished by his loving and devoted wife of 38 years. Gertha Campbell, two daughters, Shakira, Shaquan Goff, and Latasha Jones, three sons, Tony Campbell Jr., Daniel Campbell, and Kendrick Campbell, a loving mother, Edith George, 10 grandchildren, Shakira, Daniel Campbell Jr., Devontae, Demarius, Micaiah, Dallas, Jarius, Deterius, Kanisha, Justice, and Caden, seven sisters, Lula, David, Timmons, Eva Lucky Phillips, Maurice Wright, Juanita Lee Crawford, Doris Tim Pheasant, Kimberly Campbell, and Perina Phillips, eight brothers, Bernard, Carissa Campbell, Laverne Campbell Jr., Lavon Campbell, Mackie Campbell, Vanessa Campbell, Marsha Campbell, Dan Phillips, Demetrius Phillips, and Rocky Phillips, three aunts, Virginia Thomas Thornton, Cora Gaines, Callie Cornell Bethay, one uncle, William Gaines, Mother-in-law, Gertha Phillips, a bonus son, Brian Netta Campbell, a bonus daughter, Brenda Taylor, two brothers-in-laws, Henry Phillips, Danny Phillips, five sisters-in-law, actually six, one was omitted off and we'll correct that as I stand, Carrie Campbell, Carolyn Johnson, Judy Besson, Johnny Williams Jones, Johnny Faye Phillips, 
and Rosa Phillips with a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. He leaves behind so many special friends along with his phone buddies, Charles Durant, Bishop Chris Edwards, Lee Crawford, Kenny Davis, and Connie and Titus Bethay. Love you, Pops, and I promise to keep your legacy going. Love, Daniel. Thank you for who you were because you made the person I am today, and I love you, and I'm going to miss you. Tony Jr. Daddy, I don't have the words to express how much you mean to me. You were there for me any time I needed you to be. You have always shown Shakira and I how much you love us. I thank God for the time we had with you. You were my protector, my pastor, my mechanic, and my Mr. Fix-It, and most of all, a wonderful dad and granddad. You will be missed until we meet again. Love always, your baby girl, Kira. To my dad, thank you for being the representation of a great God-fearing father. You displayed honor, courage, and commitment. The love you showed us was a beacon of light. I will always cherish the moments we shared. The laughs and the jokes will always resonate with me as the days and nights get tough. I'm going to miss the outings along with the random texts and calls just to hear your voice. One of your favorite quotes was, I love you all and there is nothing you can do about it. And you did just that. Take your rest until we meet again. Love your son, Kendrick Campbell. If tears could build a stairway, if tears could build a stairway, and thoughts of memory lane, I walk right up to heaven and bring you home again. No farewell words were spoken, no time to say goodbye. You were gone before I knew it, I only God knows why. My heart's still active in sadness, and secret tears still flow. What it means to lose you, no one will ever know. But now, I know you want us to mourn for you no more. To remember all the happy times, life still has much in store. Since you'll never be forgotten, I pledge to, to you today, a hollow place within my heart is where you'll always stay. Love your wife, Gertha. Thank you. of comfort coming from the angel of this house, amen, Pastor Gary Lee. It is recently, as what you see here, uh, was built by his father, Superintendent James Lee, and this ministry has since been turned over, amen, to his son. Bishop Blue told us in our workers conference that the father's ceiling is the son's floor and that the son will take the ministry higher than the father took it. This has already been evident in the ministry of Gary Lee just the beginning of his ministry we can see the growth of the church we can see how people love him he is a great man of God and he's coming to break to us the bread of life and to give words of comfort to this family amen I don't have all of his the degrees and all of his accolades written down just want you to know the most important thing is he is a man of God. God speaks to him and God uses him and we're looking forward to hear what God has to say to us and what he has to say to the family through his servant, Elder Gary Andrew Lee. Amen. The choir is coming at this time. Amen. After the choir have sung, amen, we'll be in the hands of the eulogists for the hour, Pastor Gary Lee.
privilege and pleasure it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I am extremely aware of the somberness of the, the hour. We're going to miss Tony. Missing someone in grief is simply the evidence that love existed. So we don't shy away from our mourning. We don't shy away from our grief. We embrace it and know that we are mourning somebody that was worth loving. However, I cannot help but imagine when I drove onto the parking lot, Sister Campbell, I imagined him at the door like he was on Sunday mornings. And he would come out to the car he grabbed my dad's hand and gave him a great big handshake and say, to the greatest pastor in the whole wide world. <laughs> then he'd come back around and said, that's him. To the greatest assistant pastor in the whole wide world. He had a way of making you feel incredible. But if we're going to celebrate him, we got to do it appropriately. So here's what I'm saying. I don't need everybody to just make a bunch of noise. I don't need to pump or prime you. I'm not here to convince you that you should do something. All I ask in this room full of witnesses is for the next 10 to 15 seconds, I just want you to give God the type of praise that you believe he deserves. <laughs> praise him. I dare you to praise him like he healed your body. Praise him like he saved your soul. Praise him like he put food on your table. Praise him like there's clothes on your back. Praise him like he kept you in your right mind. Praise him like he kept you from danger seen and unseen. Praise him like nobody else could do it. Praise him like he showed up in the midnight hour. Lastly, let everything that have breath give our God some praise. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. At a funeral, at a home going celebration, do me a favor. And you're in a Kojic church, you know we do a bunch of this, and I'm sorry. But would you do me a favor and look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, even at Tony's homegoing celebration, tell them, I've got a right to praise him. You don't know like I know. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I dare you to throw your hands up and say, nobody but God. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody but God. Father, I thank you and I praise you. I magnify you. I glorify you. There is no one Haman over Okosia. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. We celebrate you, Jesus, for keeping us in our right mind. Have your way right now. We bind every spirit that's not like you. I command every demon and every devil to be bound right now. You are subject to the word of God, and in the name of Jesus, I bind depression. I bind low self-esteem. I bind heartache. I bind failure. I cancel cancer in the name of Jesus. Be glorified. Be lifted up. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Now and forever, and all God's people said, Amen. Please be seated.
have the Holy Ghost. Listen, and I want to start off by apologizing. I know that there were some people who wanted to get up and give remarks, but we had strict instructions to make sure that we stuck to the program, this respect to the family. And so I'm going to always honor what the family has asked me to do. Because when you have somebody as great as Tony, all of us could get up and say something about how great this man was. But what we most honor, what we most have to give God praise for is the fact that only God could give us somebody so special in our life. Are you happy about having Tony in your life? Well, do me a favor and just clap your hands and tell God thank you. Because we knew such a wonderful man. This is an honor for me. This is an honor for me. The Campbell family is my family. I'm looking out and I couldn't believe how many faces I recognize and just know some of you I haven't seen in quite a long time, but you've known me forever. And this is an extreme honor. Tony Campbell was somebody special. He was somebody special. Um, and you're right. He had more jokes than I ever want to know. And the last one, I think we would play jokes every now and again back and forth. And I picked at him. And he picked at me. But he has the last laugh because only Tony Campbell could get me to look up and talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> My team, uh, I won't name because we don't have a winning season. <laughs> but I never let that, <laughs> I never let that stop me from talking trash to Tony. So I'm going to give you a little different, because he was different, I'm going to do a little different than I normally do. Typically, I would give you my text, and then I would give you my subject, and then we go on. Today, because it's him, I'm going to start off with what gave me the topic of this, and then we're going to move on. I'm getting ready to quote a Pittsburgh Steeler. Never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Heinz Ward was interviewed after the Pittsburgh Steelers won the Super Bowl. And the reporter, just like me and the whole world, was shocked that the Pittsburgh Steelers won the Super Bowl. I mean, who? would have thought that the Pittsburgh Steelers, oh, I see hands raised. I'm in the, I'm in the room. <laughs> and the, oh, Lord, a whole jacket, a whole jacket. <laughs> he clean, too. Right. The reporter said, the reporter said, who would have thought the Pittsburgh Steelers would have won? And they were down in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, they made this miraculous interception, and it was just an amazing little feat. And the reporter said, could anyone believe that? And Heinz Ward looked at him and said, yes, ma'am. We believe. We always believe. So for the next few moments, I just want to talk from that subject. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. We believe. Find somebody else that actually wants to talk to you for a moment and tell them, hey, neighbor, did you hear what I said? We believe. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 says this. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, somebody shout now. There is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me. Now that was supposed to be good news to somebody. Not only him, but also to everyone who has longed for his appearing. For a third time, when you help me repeat my topic, tell them we believe. It is, oh, here we go again. In 2009, 
Tony Campbell's Pittsburgh Steelers won the Super Bowl. And once again, I cannot reiterate this enough. Nobody except him and a few other people <laughs> expected them to win. And another reporter during his interview asked this time Mike Tomlin, the coach. He said, what's your secret, coach? Coach Tomlin said, I told our guy, we have a lot of talent. We got a lot of ability. But it's not about what you're capable of. It's about what you're willing to do. I'm going to say that again. It's not about what you're capable of. It's about what you're willing to do. Typically in a church setting like this, especially in an event like this, we all act like we got the Holy Ghost. Don't you look at me in that tone of voice. I'm gifted. Y'all know good and well some of us ain't wore a suit or stepped into a church in a minute. But leave it to Tony Campbell to bring us back to church. Because it's not that you weren't capable of it. It's about what you're willing to do. In settings like this, we like to talk about how the family can always come together and we should always be close and we should kill any squalms or, or confusion. That We should make sure that we don't let the sun go down, sun go down on our wrath. Because you're capable of doing that. But it's not about what you're capable of. It's about what you're willing to do. We talk about how gifted the family is, and Lord knows that's some of the best singing I've heard in a long time. And now my father does tell this story. I need to set the record straight. It's not that I was against quartet singing. But my father has a knack of picking some of the worst quartet singers. Except the Canton Spirituals now. He liked them and I like them too. <laughs> He's from Dothan, Alabama. And, and they don't even call it quartet music back out there. They call it Pumalaka music. <laughs> now, nah, honey, I told you I was going to be on my side in a minute. It's not what you're capable of. But even, even with all that singing and all that gifting, there are probably other people in the room that are just as gifted. But it's not what you're capable of. It's about what you're willing to do. In a room like this, I'm looking at such a great sea of incredible people. It is no doubt that there are people in this room that could change an entire community. I enjoyed the testimony, sir. I enjoyed the testimony of how Tony Campbell would stand in front of that young man and once one person gets up, a whole bunch of other people would get up, and it's easy to get up after somebody else gets up because the whole room had the ability to step up first. But it's not what you're capable of. It's about what you're willing to do. I hope y'all can catch what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to say that once you leave this room, you can go back to your community and change the entire scope of the world. You can go back to your home and make sure that your home never looks the same way again. You can change the entire lineage of your family because you're capable of doing it. You know what I'm getting ready to say, but it's not what you're capable of. It's about what you're... And if I have 50 people in this room that's committed and says, I'm willing to make a change, I need you to make just a little bit of noise. Paul, the Apostle Paul now speaks to us three things, and I'm going to get out your way. Three things. Number one, we read this. Paul says, I am fought the good fight. Paul begins by declaring, I have fought a good fight. Throughout his ministry, Paul faced numerous challenges, hardships, and oppositions. Yet he remained steadfast in his commitment to proclaiming the gospel. Regardless of the cost, Paul wasn't just stoned one time, he was stoned several times. But like Paul, we are called to fight, but not just any fight. We are called to fight the good fight. 
Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Some of us have been crying and worrying about situations, and I'm here to tell you today that you don't have to worry and cry and complain, but if you would get up and use what God has put in you, trust me, everything can be different this time next week. Tell somebody it's not what you're capable of. It's what you're willing to do. The good fight, my brothers and my sisters, the good fight is the fight that Tony Campbell fought. It's the fight of faith. Bishop, what a wonderful story. You're absolutely correct. He was a man of faith. Sit out in the yard, can't see, start talking about being able to see. And even though he could not see to jump in a truck and drive down to the stove, to the shop. Yes, I agree with whoever that was you said who came out and said, what you doing here? You crazy. Because, Bishop, I just got to believe that that car ride increased your faith <laughs> and your prayer life. Because I would have been pleading on Jesus, you hear me? And I've seen him go a lot of places. I've known Tony a little while. I've seen him go a lot of places, but I have never seen Tony drive. <laughs> Everywhere I saw Tony Kimball go, that wonderful lady right there was driving. <laughs> It is important because the good fight is a good fight of faith. It's the ability to keep doing when all odds are against you. It's the ability to move on when somebody else says you can't make it. It's the ability to keep pressing when it looks like you should just crumble and fold up. It's the ability to keep walking when you feel like standing still. I'm talking about the type of faith that our ancestors had. I'm talking about the type of faith that Big Mama had. I love it. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, the reason I'm saying this is because, first of all, I need you to understand, I'm the same type of person that Brother Tony Campbell was as it relates to preaching. When we went to funerals, he would say, you got to preach to the people who are there. Because what he's preaching already is that all of us are going to have to be here at some point in our life. And the question is not whether or not you're going to have the room filled because this doesn't matter. This is the evidence to us that Tony was loved. But trust me, the Bible says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the Bible says to be dead in Christ will be caught up to be with him. And that means you don't have to worry about Tony looking down and trying to figure out who's at his funeral. I believe he's up there singing, shouting, and dancing. But this is for us. Ecclesiastes says it's better to go to a funeral than it is to go to a party. Why does it say that? Because it reminds you that every one of us are going to be here one day. And so we sit here and we understand now that the fight of faith is something that has to be continuous. Everybody say continuous. Amen. That I believe sometimes we have more degrees and more, more uh, education now than we ever had. But I still believe with the camera that Big Mama had it right. Big Mama didn't have a great education. Big Mama would scrub the floors at other people's homes to make ends meet. Big Mama knew how to sew up patches and make sure that she cooked enough for seven people on a little bit of money. But despite all the education, Big Mama had a way of saying, I just got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I hope I'm talking to a few people with enough faith to say, I can't explain it. I don't understand it, and I can't diagram it, but I just got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. You have to fight the good fight of faith. But the second thing Paul says, after you fight the good fight, you got to finish the race. You got to finish the race. We got a whole bunch of people that starts off strong, but you got to finish the race. You can't just be the person who gets up and decides that you're going to go to church this Sunday. It's not about church attendance. It's about changing your life. If I never see you in this house, I want to know that you're somewhere lifting up the name of Jesus. 
Because I tell you, saints, the reason finishing the race takes God is because in this type of a world, every time you turn around, it wants you to quit and give up. We got more quitters and more give up, giver uppers than we ever had before. And unfortunately, it don't take much to do it anymore. Some people will walk out of church because one person said the wrong thing to you. Walk out of church because they didn't sing your song. Walk out of church because you ain't hear your music. Walk out of church because ain't nobody called your name. But God knows I can't wait to get to the day where we are like David. Come hell or high water, I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. I have finished the race, and in this Christian life, it's often compared to a race, the journey of endurance and perseverance. Just as athletes train diligently and run with endurance toward the finish line, we also must press toward the goal of our faith. We are called to run our race with patience, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. It's an important part that you have to understand because finishing is the only goal. Finishing is the only goal. That may sound strange because we are living in a day and a time where people want to convince us that we got to be like somebody else. So we got to act like somebody else. That if you don't wear this type of clothes, you ain't saved. If you don't wear this type of suit, you ain't saved. If you don't talk like this, you ain't saved. If you don't, I wish I had somebody. But I want somebody to understand God called you to be you. And if you'll come to him, he'll fix everything that needs fixing. But don't wait for you to change and look like somebody else. You got to learn to come to Jesus just as you are. Why? Because I might not be the strongest. I might not be the fastest. But thank God, God left on record some evidence for me. He said, the race, Gary, is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But the Bible says, he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. If you know you saved, touch somebody and tell them, I know I got it. I might not look like you, but I know I got it. I might not dance like you, but I know I got it. And even at a home going celebration, if I got it, I got to tell him thank you, because he gave it. I don't need everybody, but I need 25 people to open your mouth and give God praise, because you know you got it. And let me help you, let me help you real quick. This is not to make me feel like I'm preaching. I need you to understand that when the enemy comes in and starts putting heaviness on you, praise is the antidote. I'm trying to help you get it off you because you're heavy and you're weighted down. But God told us in his word, he gave us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's why I'm telling you, the heavier you feel, the more you should open your mouth. The harder it gets, the more you should lift your hands. When times get tough, clap your hands and give God praise. I gotta be done. I gotta be done. I gotta be done. But as I get finished, I got to tell you, like one of the teachers used to say, teacher asked Tony, a little boy named Tony, and the little boy named Tony said, Tony, I need you to use the word repair in a sentence. And the little boy said, I got that, no problem. He said, I'm repairing to go to lunch. (laughs) The teacher said, no, no, Tony, that ain't ain't it. The word repair means to fix. Tony looked at the teacher and said, that's what I mean. (laughs) I'm fixing to go to lunch. (laughs) Well, do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm repairing to get out of here. But before I go, I got to tell you one thing. Not only do you have to fight a good fight, not only do you have to finish the race, but the last thing you got to do is you got to keep the faith. Tell somebody, tell them you got to keep the faith. 
When the enemy comes in like a flood. When the enemy tries to knock you down. When the enemy tries to make you quit. Tell somebody, I got to keep the faith. When the enemy tells you you can't make it. When the devil tells you you can't go on. You got to keep the faith. When it feels like all hope is lost. And when you're crying tears on your pillow. That's when you got to keep the faith. That's when you got to keep the faith. Can I tell you how to keep the faith? Faith coming by hearing. I feel good, dog. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you ever want to keep the faith, you got to get in the word. Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor, get in the word and stay there. That's how you keep the faith. I'm proud of how to keep the faith. You got to be able to be sick in your body, hurting in your flesh. Look at yourself in the mirror and say he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised from my iniquity and the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Yes, sir. You got to learn how to look yourself in the mirror when it feels all hope is gone. Get in the word and stay there. You got to be able to say, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me when everything seems like it's lost and everything feels like it's hurting. You've got to learn how to look yourself in the mirror and say, for I reckon, I need to have some church folks, for I reckon the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Find somebody, God help me here today, find somebody, shake them by the hand and say, neighbor, Here's what I need you to know That after all I've been through After all my heartache After all my tears Tell your neighbor I still believe You can tell me there is no God But I still believe I've been hurt in my body But I still believe Is God a healer? I need to find somebody who can say, I still believe. Find somebody, shake them by the hand. I know you don't know me to do this, but grab your neighbor, pull on your neighbor, shake your neighbor, rock your neighbor, and tell them, hang on in this. Payday's coming. After a while, I still believe. I still believe. Why can you laugh? When I feel like crying, why can you shout when I feel like hurting? Because I still believe to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Soon and very soon. Find somebody yell across the room and say, oh neighbor, one glad morning. When this life is over, I'm gonna fly. I'm gonna fly away, cause I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. Let's do like the old folks used to say. If you still believe, don't wait till the battle is over. But open your mouth and shout right now. Praise them like you believe it. Give them glory like you believe it. Give them honor like you believe it. Give them glory. I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. I may have tears, but I still believe. I may be hurting, but I still believe. You may be mourning, but don't stop believing. We're in the hands of the funeral.
If there's anybody in this room that knows that the Lord came back right now, you would not be ready. But you're ready today to make that commitment. What better way to celebrate Tony than to turn your life over to the God he served? And if that's you right where you are, I just want you to throw your hands in the air. Let me see you. I love it, sweetheart. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. That's wonderful. I see you. I see you. If you have your hands raised, if you have your hands raised right where you are, I just want you to stand. Stand. Those of you who had your hands raised, let me see you. For one second, if you didn't have your hands raised, I want you to sit down. Just the ones who have their hands raised, please stand. Oh, yes, Jesus. Sister Campbell, is this okay? You never know when it's going to be your last chance and your last opportunity. This is wonderful. My question to you, number one, is do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? If you believe that, lift your hands and say, I believe. It's wonderful. Do you believe that he died on the cross and then the Lord resurrected for your sins he got up out the grave just for you if you believe that lift your hands and say I believe but then repeat after me forget about everyone around you right now you're in the presence of the Lord say Lord forgive me for all of my sins Wash me and cleanse me. Say, I need you to be my Lord and my Savior. I give you my life. Take all of me. Lord, I need you to help me live a life that's pleasing to you. And your word says, if I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart the Lord Jesus died and was resurrected for my sins you said I would be saved and right now I confess and I believe so I know that right now I'm saved my sister, my sweetie, do you all believe you're saved? Are you saved? I want you to raise your hand to everybody and tell them I'm saved. My wonderful group of women right here, do you all believe that the Lord forgives you of your sin, forgave you of your sins? Have you accepted him as your Lord? My question to you is, are you saved? Lift your hands and tell everybody that I'm saved. My wonderful two people right here. Did you confess? 
Do you believe? Are you saved? Lift your hands and say, I'm saved. Why, even in this home going, this is something to celebrate. Open your mouth and thank God. Welcome to the family of God. I still believe. of God is one of those things. <laughs> 